All right, uh, a good morning to you all. And thank you very much for joining the Business of Onion Production webinar, where we are discussing uh, how to grow onions profitably. I do hope that uh, you will benefit from this webinar. And I also hope that you are staying safe, practicing social distancing, sanitizing, and also masking up. You know, running a successful farm business is a deeply satisfying and rewarding experience. And the first step is learning. And that first step of learning is key. Therefore, the ultimate gist of this webinar is to help you with knowledge on the business of onion production. We will touch on both the business and the technical issues to ensure that you get all the information that you need to get started. We are live on Agribusiness Media Facebook page, and I am sure that you have done your system check and your audio and speaker is working fine. If you are not presenting, we kindly ask you to, pre to please turn off your video, but we'll also try to control that from this end. We are going to have informative presentations today from our presenters, uh, Elsie Banda from Sidco, Mr. Gonzo from ZFC, uh, Elsie Banda is from Sidco Vegetables, and we we'll also have Sydney from Musica Solutions. Our presenters have the knowledge they have a vast of experience in the business of onion production. So uh, be rest assured that we have the right uh, people to, to help us with the information that we need. We are going to give you farmers and participants that are joining us a chance to ask questions. And so to allow for a smooth transition between the presenters, what we'll do is we will have a question and answer session right after all the presenters or right after all the presentation. So if you have a question, if you have a comment, please type in the Zoom uh, chat uh, section uh, that is right at the bottom of your screen, or you can use the comment uh, section uh, feature or the comment feature if you are watching us live on Facebook. And to uh, our participants, uh, please uh, use uh, those features to send your questions and also uh, your comments. Our panelists will be able to respond after their presentations. You can also use the raise, the, the raise end feature uh, during the question and answer time. So without wasting time, I'd like to invite our first pre uh, presenter, uh, that is El Sivanda, is with Sidco Vegetables. He will cover on uh, the variety selection, economics of production, and also good agronomic practices. Elsie Banda, you can uh, go for it. Good morning, everyone. I uh, think you are struggling to unmute um, uh, from my mic there, but uh, now I'm live. Are you getting me through? Yes, sure. Uh, we can uh, hear you and we can see your screen. Uh, thanks. Ah. Uh, you can you can continue. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, today I'm going to present on onions. Obviously, being the first presenter. You know, I couldn't really pick exactly what I could include and what I could not include, but I'm going to try and uh, cover, you know, the basics. I'm aware there's also uh, Gonzo from ZFC. I'm sure he's going to be uh, a bit more detailed on fertilizers, chemicals, I think, uh, from the perspective of other uh, consumables related to production of onions. 
Uh, just as a, a brief background, uh, my name is Lebrith Swanda. I'm an agronomist with Seed Co. Uh, vegetables. Uh, and uh, my contact details, um, they're available there in terms of the phone number. And also I'm available on Facebook. You can, you can always uh, interact uh, using all uh, the different uh, social uh, platforms. So uh, Sidco Vegetables obviously does uh, quite a range of other products that include onions that we're covering today. We do also you know, we have uh, cabbages, we have um, tomatoes, export crops that include your chilies and, uh, and uh, peas, including fine bean there. So, but uh, uh, I would obviously want to then uh, take it to the presenters to say, uh, with the current trends uh, from just a brief, I, I know somebody's going to talk about the uh, economics of um, what culture currently, um, is, is a company that hosts uh, all this range of products. Some are perishable, some are not semi-perishable in terms of their time, some are dryable, some you can keep them for long. And, um, it would be very important that uh, you know the participants take note that uh, amongst those crops that you have got, you know that security of perishability, uh, where you can store a crop, where you can keep a crop for long, whilst you maneuver your uh, ways into the market. Um, over and above butternuts, onions are also one of those crops that you can grow, sell as green, dry them, store them, and continue selling them. I mean, it's it's an entire year uh, when you look at uh, onion production. So definitely it's a very, very critical crop uh, amongst the basket. Remember tomatoes, you can't keep them for long. If something goes wrong on the market, you start having issues there. So onions are definitely very critical. Now, uh, my scope of presentation, I'm going to be uh, a bit brief. Uh, I think I saw it's about 20 minutes or so, but I'm sure I, you know, cover the essentials and also obviously respond to questions that will arise during the course of the presentation. Uh, the idea with onion production uh, is that we are pushing an agenda where we are talking of using hybrids on onions. In fact, it's actually an agenda that we are pushing amongst all crops. Uh, you realize that uh, we have got very little flexibility in terms of price that we can a demand from the market because of the dynamics of demand and supply. So ultimately, as horticultural farmers, our, our um, uh, advantage only comes when you can get the yields. So you realize this is a game that is already taking place on um, uh, uh, crops like potatoes, for example, where it is now very difficult to get uh, those super prices that we used to get in the past. So onion is one of them. The way we insist that farmers must grow hybrids. I'm going to share a few slides on why it is critically important to do that. Now, when you look at um, hybrids, they will assure you high yield. That is something that is very important. Once you've got the high yield, even if the price is not as exciting, you still break even and even make a profit because we still want to make a profit, definitely. So we want to um, at least be operating above profit levels. Uh, hybrids are going to give you uniformity. You see most of the numbers that we punch in when we're doing our budgets, uh, you know, they, we generally call them gross margin budgets where you're trying to say, okay, what am I growing? Uh, what is the yield? What is the price? What is the cost of producing it? How much do I get per dollar that I would have spent on the project? If most of those calculations rely on number one, the plant population and the yield and the price. So you will discover that uh, moving from the plant population, uniformity, the yield, those are functions that you want to really be in control of. So it's key to choose a variety that is uniform. You also have you know, other aspects like your growth and vigor, your pest and disease, and also improved quality. Most of these products where you store them, uh, especially onions that we're dealing with today, uh, issues to do with quality are very, very critical. You won't get that similar quality from one variety to the other. You will see when I try and separate the varieties that we do as Sidco, uh, which are uh, predominantly Azera material, but you also have other material from uh, Europe, which is not from uh, Israel. Um, when you are choosing these varieties for onions, uh, there are key issues also to deal with uh, adaptability. I think people have seen onions flowering, or we call that bolting. Uh, that's a function of uh, variety selection and adaptability. 
uh, a product that does well in another country has to be adapted first. So we do that for you and we uh, select the best that you can grow uh, in most parts of the country. You know, shelf life, I cannot ever emphasize that. Uh, I know we've got, we receive calls, a lot of calls, especially once you go past uh, 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 December, uh, mid-January there about where we get most of our rains. We receive calls, uh, farmers are saying, my onions are shooting and trying to investigate the variety. We discover they actually grew a variety which is not for uh, storing that long. So if they were harvesting it in uh, October, they needed to sell all of it at least uh, before the end of December because that's a variety that is not suitable for storing. And then suitability for target markets, very, very, very critical. You have to understand what the market is looking for, especially when we are looking at uh, issues to do with um, uh, uh, size of the bulb, shape of the bulb, the level of the skin. When you're looking at the onions, that's very critical as well. So. An onion is just not called an onion because an onion, it has to carry certain attributes that you score and you are happy with, and the market is also happy with. Now, uh, before I get to the varieties, because you know we got very good genetics, but we also emphasize a few basic critical uh, uh, um, steps that a farmer should take. This could apply to even other crops horticulturally. We encourage people that we are they avoid blanket recommendations especially when it comes to fertilizer issues you have a, as farmers we have different soil types they could be sandy loams they could be clays they could be red clays black clays they may have very varying levels of balances of salts so that's very critical that you get a soil test and um, get a proper recommendation. Normally in a soil test, I think uh, the RFC is going to cover that. You know, we look at aspects such as pH, we look at aspects such as uh, your phosphates, that they are adequate in the soil or you need to improve them. And then we look at the salts. So it sounds a bit technical, but it's something that when you do as a farmer regularly, you then understand, uh, you know, uh, the steps that are, are taken in there. For onions, for example, where we were, we are going to plant uh, these crops very close to each other. Uh, in some instances, you're looking at uh, you know spacings of around ten by ten, ten centimeters by ten centimeters. Uh, that requires proper soil preparation, which is clod free, uh, you know, good fine till very very critical. Uh, root development. Remember, onions are shallow rooted. You want to develop a proper. Uh, 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 seed bed when you call it like in the field both for the seedlings and also for the field uh, for onions we do have two options generally in terms of planting them one of them is uh, direct planting them which normally is done at quite commercial scales but the majority of our farmers use seedlings so we want you to produce a quality seedling first which is young vigorous healthy and well hardened so that when you transplant you are avoiding uh, getting mixed sizes of, of, of seedlings getting into the field. Once you do that, they also bulb at different times. You can't then harvest at the same time. So you want to make the crop as uniform as possible. Um, we also have aspects to do with weed control, pest and disease control, uh, just to preempt on uh, uh, you know healthy crop with uh, with onions. You will look. It's one crop that you can plant and use. Are here besides entirely from transplanting up to harvesting. So it's really quite a good crop uh, because you've got options in terms of chemicals, which I'm sure ZDF is going to share as well. Uh, but um, it's a crop that you can grow and manage weeds by use of chemicals. Irrigation, that's also a very important part of uh, the system. You can use drip, overhead, flood, depending on factors, but the best option for onions will be overhead. Drip will limit your plant population. Flood, you know, it doesn't come very comfortable with uh, the crops. You know, flooding, I mean, there's no control of the amount of water that you're putting. I, I've, I've realized also recently, uh, there are also methods, including the, what they call rain pipes. Uh, they're predominantly used for seedlings, but uh, for crops like onions and carrots, they seem quite handy because they are in, it, they're in intermediate between a drip system and an outright overhead system. 
their key advantages is that you know they apply water quite uniformly and um, they use a shorter duration as compared to our conventional uh, sprinklers. Now with onions, uh, you would want to understand that uh, the, I think it's one of the crops with the highest plant populations, obviously it's followed by carrots, where our range of populations, they range from about 600,000 to a million plants per hectare. So I just put one illustration of an example of um, the plant population, if you're going to get about plus minus 660,000 plants there, this would be a configuration of a 0 0.15 by 0 0.1 in terms of uh, the spacings. And um, I realized that many farmers, when you visit their places, this issue of plant population, it is disregard, it's, it's disregarded on account that, you know, most of the crops that you grow, I mean, you are recommended your 60 centimeters in row and um, one meter uh, in row. But for onions, we are talking of centimeters, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. I will share in the following slide just to show how you would can make sure you maintain this plant population. Very critical. You, if you live in onion, even if it's uh, described as a 120 gram onion, if you leave it uh, to sit on its own, it will give you a 500 gram bulb. But no one is going to buy that kind of size of a bulb. So you need to really respect the plant populations. Now, just to get the numbers um, a little bit, which is what excites most farmers before we try and venture into any a uh, 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 project, uh, I, as earlier uh, indicated, I mentioned that uh, you know our yield and the performance financially of our projects they rely on these numbers, what we call the plant population. So starting with the plant population of say about six hundred thousand plants a hectare, and you get an average bulb size of hundred grams, that will automatically give you approximately sixty six tons of onions. So when we talk about yield to say you can get 80 tons of onions in per hectare, you can talk, get uh, uh, 60 tons of onions as a range, you can get 100 tons of onions. This is based on a scientific calculation, which really relies on the farmer establishing the correct plant population. So we are saying, uh, once you get your 66 tons, uh, which I, I, I picked as a minimum, because most of these onions, I mean, this is the lowest population you can use, and the 100 grams, I mean, is the smallest size of onion that you can work with. I'm talking of 10 onions giving you a kg. Your gross, gross income, suppose you're not really uh, trying to push for very hard prices and you're accepting uh, $3.50 a 10 kg pocket, you will get you know, a gross income of about 23,000. I'm, I'm sure Msika um, uh, is going to work out you know, you know, some of the other final numbers. But um, you know the estimate costs of producing onions uh, is about 5.5 to 6.5 per hectare. Uh, the majority of the costs are uh, related to the actual transplanting process and also uh, the storage. So the longer you store it, depending with your energy charges, you know it sort of gets to that range. But uh, with about 5.5, there are about 5 to 5.5, you should be able to do a crop. So that's a crop with a return per dollar uh, of over four, you know, per every dollar spent. So that's definitely a very good crop, especially because of that it gives you that liberty to sell as green onion and also to sell as dried onions. Uh, I'm going to proceed to illustrate something very, very, very critical about the plant population. This is related to the previous slide where when you then visit Citco and you want to buy your onion seeds, I just caught you $1,008 per year in terms of seed. Um, to the right, you realize that is, um, to the left, I mean, there is a metal size on display there, which tries to really make sure we respect the spacing that will be recommended. So it, the range will be, the interval can be up to 15 centimeters uh, in terms of uh, interval spacing. The in row ranges from eight, some they go as low as six centimeters up to 10 centimeters. So this spacing can only be achieved by doing a fabrication. It's quite a very basic fabrication that can be done uh, at farm level. Any person who does welding can do that for you. So you have to create a fixed marker 
it represents uh, like it looks like a arrow, but all those uh, spikes that you see there, they represent the position of the onions. So when this thing is actually placed on the ground, you've done your land prep adequately, you've removed all the clods, it will mark the interrow and the inrow for you. And then the people who come behind, they will simply be planting. So this is very, very important. It's a tool that you cannot work without when you're doing uh, uh, onions. It comes in also different forms. If it's mechanized and it's used on a tractor, they then modify the spikes as such that you know you put these spikes on a roller, you get a round pipe, uh, which has got spikes around it. So when that thing rolls, uh, it's going to be uh, marking the same position, the same way this um, arrow thing can mark your specimens. Now, getting to the hybrids themselves, um, as farmers, I'm sure you're going to say, why don't you just choose uh, a few? If, if you give me a list of about uh, six varieties for me to choose, is it not difficult as a farmer? Definitely is very uh, important. You'll notice that these onions, they respond to what we call day length. Now for them to bulb. So if you pick an onion variety and plant it on the wrong slot, it creates a bit of uh, challenges when it comes to uh, issues to do with uh, uh, bolting, that is like premature flowering. Uh, you may recall that our onions, they grow over two seasons. The first season, is to grow as a bulb, and then the second season is to grow for seed production. So generally for commercial purposes, we grow them just for the bulb. So the day season, each onion has got its own slot that we plant it, uh, you see in the following slide that I'm going to share. Uh, so our first variety uh, that I'm going to share is uh, about this adder. Now, the onion market has got um, fresh onion and dried onion. So ADA comes in very critical when it comes to uh, fresh onion. It has got quite a short term a, a storage period, four to five months, uh, if done it best. But if you look at even this picture, that shows that it doesn't, uh, it's not gifted in terms of uh, uh, the skin, uh, which protects the bulb during handling, and that then prolongs uh, its duration. So it comes in as a yellow onion. The shape also is very critical with onions, like I said, this one comes as a, as a globe. Its maturity, you see there, that's about 90 days to maturity. The second variety, uh, which is Elad, this one again is a yellow variety, which comes as a flat globe, 90 to 110 days. It has got very good storage of up to six months. And then the third variety uh, is Dina. So you will notice that in the market, uh, we are uh, encouraging mostly Elad and Dina because of the skin color, which is preferred by the market, the yield, which is very high, and also, uh, you know, its adaptability where it has got very, very minimal uh, bolting in very different growing areas around the country. Uh, it has got a round top, and it also matures between 90 to 110 days. It can also store up to uh, four to five months. Uh, certain, it's another variety that we have. It's a yellow one, a round top, 90 to 110 days. This one has got uh, an intermediate storage, uh, which is similar to other. It's a three to four months uh, storage period. The last one, the last one on the yellow ones uh, is Regent F1, which is also a yellow uh, bulb. This one is globe in shape. 90 to 110 days, again, a three to four months storage. And then we have also a red one, which is called Neptune. Now, uh, just like in the market for onions, you realize that uh, whilst red onions pay very, very well, they normally get a price which is, uh, if not twice as much of the white ones, but the volume is really, really small in the market, probably 15%, 10, 15% percent thereabout. So you can't grow very large electrodes of the red onions. Unlike in West Africa, they actually do the red, not the white. So uh, we are still more on the white or yellow onions uh, and the red ones comes in occupying a small space. Um, and uh, once you don't do that, it becomes, uh, uh, you have to grow knowing exactly which market you're going to uh, push to. Now, uh, 
I'm going to share this planting windows. If you look at uh, this table there, this is what we use to uh, recommend uh, varieties to our growers. Uh, for example, regent, it will be planted as early as starting from 21 uh, uh, January, thereabout, straight until to the 27th of May. That's this planting slot. Elad again, you started in January, other in January. Certain comes in as the last one where you started in March, like where we are now. Uh, we are, you can still push dinner, you can still get uh, certain, but for other, uh, you still can plant it, but you are, you, in terms of green onions, you will be a bit late. Um, the issues of spacing, I think I touched those ones when I was illustrating the importance of the plant population and also the importance of you getting the right yield. Uh, um, as a farmer, inter row it's a range 15 to 20 centimeters, in row five to eight centimeters. Depth, normally with um, our onions, we strictly plant the roots only, so it's quite a shallow planting. We get the plant property, I touched on that one, and then the yields, high yields, seed rates about four to five kgs, but this depends with the wastage that you get uh, from the seed bed and also during the process of transplanting. It's very critical that uh, you take seedlings. Because remember, when you look at about over 600,000 seedlings, uh, there's a temptation to really be wasteful as, as, as the team is trying to plant, but you have to put in an eye there. The calendars are uh, just illustrated that as well, where you're looking at uh, planting around January to mid-April uh, for your seed beds, and then you're transplanting starting February to June. Uh, the reason why we are quite particular about, you know, your cutoff time when it comes to transplanting onions, you want to escape rains. Any onion that experiences some rain at, at maturity or over at irrigation at maturity, it reduces the shelf life very, very drastically. So it's very important that we, uh, we, we take note of these transplanting beds. Onion pests and diseases uh, with a good spray program. I'm sure um, I will not preempt what Gonzo wants to present on these on his uh, herbicides, fungicides, and also insecticides. But the critical one, uh, you know, you're dumping off a transplanting, over irrigating seedlings and transplanting. You know, it's it's really a big challenge. We have been visiting a few or so farmers. We have yet this challenge where you know the rains because they transplanted early. Uh, we're affecting their crops because they were not on raised beds. We also have purple blotch, botrytis, and powdery mildew. In terms of the pests, the major one uh, are thrips. That's what we worry about when we look at uh, onions. Otherwise, the rest uh, is a crop that uses very minimal uh, chemicals in terms of its uh, production. Um, so this this sort of uh, brings the, to the end um, my presentation of onions. I will take questions and. Um, any comments uh, if there are any that have been drawn through? Thank you uh, very much, uh, Spanda, for that uh, great uh, presentation and for covering uh, key issues in uh, onion production. We now know that to grow onions uh, successfully, we have to avoid blanket fertilizer application uh, to ensure good cell uh, preparation. And we also have to use good quality seed and uh, seedlings. And it is also important to ensure a healthy crop and uh, adequate irrigation is key. We have also learned how uh, lucrative the venture is. Uh, thanks again, uh, Le Prince Wanda, for that great presentation. Uh, to our uh, participants, keep the questions and, uh, and your comments coming through uh, in the chat uh, section or comments uh, if you're watching us live on our agribusiness media Facebook page. Soil health or the capacity of the soil to function is critical to our survival especially considering the mounting pressure on the soil to produce food. Let me now invite uh, Zivanai Gonzo from ZFC to help us on soil fertility. Thank you, Zivanai.
Zivanai, yes, if can if you can hear us, please you can. Yes, uh, yes, yes. I, I can I can hear you uh, clearly. Let me try to 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 share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can uh, see your screen now, but not your presentation as yet. Can you see it now? Uh, no, not as yet. Not as yet, okay. Yes, we can see it now. Thank you. Okay, yeah, good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Zwane Gonzo, an agronomist with, with CFC. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mkoma Rollins for organizing this uh, webinar. I'd also like to thank uh, uh, Spanda for, 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 for his presentation. He has uh, made my work lighter. And uh, thanks for the numbers that you have given us, uh, Spanda. So I'm going to uh talk about crop nutrition and uh, crop protection aspects uh, of, of 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 onion pro production and because of time i'm going straight into my into my presentation i'll cut with crop nutrition uh you know a fertilizer program you know that supplies a balanced nutrient supply that would be given a primary secondary and micronutrient is critical for high yields and crop quality. Your primary nutrients are your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash. Then your secondary nutrients are your calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. Then you have your micronutrients. So all the 16 essential nutrients are needed when we are doing uh, onion. But how do you know how much of what to, to, to apply? So we say it begins with soil analysis, you know, to understand uh, uh, the nutritional status of your soil. A uh, soil analysis will also be able, will enable you to, you know, to give good fertilizer, you know, decisions. We always say that the generic fertilizer recommendation, you know, will always result in you uh, getting a uh, generic yields, which are your, you know, general middle of the road uh, yields. So our advice as LFC is that you bring your source for analysis so that you understand the nutritional, you know, status of your soil and make good uh, a crop nutrition uh, decision. So in terms of, uh, in terms of, of, of onion, what products are we talking of when we talk of your best of fertilizer uh, options, we are saying come in uh, with your gypsum, which is calcium sulfate at, at planting. Gypsum supplies calcium and uh, sulfur, which are your secondary uh, nutrients. So we are saying come in with 350 to about 400 kgs of gypsum at planting. And you have uh, an option to choose from the following, uh, you know, fertilizer uh, 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 lines. You may come in with your ZFC vegetable blend, 92420, 600 to 800 kgs per hectare. This one over and above your primary nutrients, NPK, it also supplies your secondary nutrient, which is sulfur, as well as your trace elements, uh, zinc and boron. You can choose to apply the tobacco fed 62420. These are high analysis fertilizers. 
They also contain sulfur and, and boron, 600 to 800 kgs per hectare. Then you may opt to apply seedbed fat, which is your compound S72018. It also contains sulfur and boron. Your rate is 700 to 900 kgs per hectare. You may also opt to apply compound C51512, 1,000 to 1,200 kgs per hectare. The rate increases because compound C is a low analysis fertilizer. And that range, Samanda talked about plant population. So the range that we are giving depends on, on, on your desired plant population and perhaps the size of bulb that you want to, to, to achieve. So it's important to apply all your basal fertilizer at planting because of the phosphorus that is in there, which is needed early. And uh, it also does not uh, you know, move. It stays where you, uh, where you, where you apply it. You know, onions have got a relatively low nutrient uptake efficiency. Why? Because of the shallow root system that Banda talked about. From the picture, you can see the root network. It's very, it's very shallow. So nutrient uptake efficiency is very low. So it becomes important to implement, you know, a fertilizer program that takes that into account in order in, to, to, to help you achieve, achieve your, 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 your desired yield. So we are saying you broadcast and incorporate your fertilizer in the first 10 centimeters of soil prior to planting. We don't want to bury the fertilizer too deep because the, the root system is shallow. Uh, and we are saying we need to apply all the nutrients as close as possible to the, to the rooting zone. So, for your top dressing, we are saying this is mostly your nitrogen, and in some cases, yeah, you can apply it together with your potash. With your nitrogen, we advise farmers to avoid over applying the nutrient because more nitrogen can delay maturity. Too much nitrogen softens your bulbs and may lead to storage rods, uh, poor quality, you know, uh, low shelf life and what have you. So we are saying make the final nitrogen application at least four weeks prior to harvest. And we are saying the amount of fertilizer that you need is your top dressing in form of your nitrogen. We are saying 250 to 300 kgs of, of, of ammonium nitrate. You may choose to apply other forms of nitrogen and uh, uh, we advise you to use the nitrate nitrogen that is in your calcium nitrate, in your potassium nitrate is also very good for, for, for onion. For your nitrogen, you can split applied at four to six weeks, depending on soil type, especially for those who are in light soils. You may come in uh, with two applications, you know, there's leaching and, 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 and what have you. The second application of nitrogen, you can replace it with potassium nitrate, especially in areas where potash is leaking or in areas where you have your you know, potash uh, fixing soils. Then you also need your trace elements for you to supply all the essential nutrients that the crop requires. So we are saying come in with your quick start. Quick start may be applied in the seed bed. You can also apply it uh, soon after transplanting or soon after crop establishment to those who do direct seeding. Then after that, you may come in with your, with your quick grow when the crop starts to grow vegetatively. You may come in and uh, every week or every fortnight uh, applying these uh, foliar fertilizers. Over and above the trace elements that they supply, they also uh, add your primary nutrients your NPK is also in there. Uh, then uh, you also have uh, some of your secondary nutrients. Another important fertilizer that supplies stress elements that we have at ZS is foliar 15. It also supplies your NPK, which are your primary nutrients as well as your all other stress elements. And in terms of crop protection, because of our time I'm now rushing, there are generally three most, most common, you know, pests, that is your thrips, 
your paper blotch and your donor mildew. I'll start with the FIPS. You know, they cause both direct, indirect, and indirect damage. By direct damage, they feed and lay eggs on the leaves. You know, that may cause, you know, a onion to be unmarketable, especially when you want to uh, sell your onion as, as, as bunching onions, the leaves will be uh, not looking good. Over and above the effect on the leaves, they also transmit uh, you know, viral disease. And I'm sure you all know that uh, all viral diseases uh, cannot be cured. There's no cure, whether in humans, in animals, or even in crops. So they transmit uh, viruses, especially uh, the virus that is called iris yellow spot virus. So we are saying you come in and uh, scout regularly, then invoke your control measures. With Malatha and 25 WP, that you can apply 500 grams per hectare. You may also come in with your spike extra. Spike extra uh, contains uh, emamectin benzoate and, and acetamiprid. So you may come in with your spike extra at 300 to 500 mils per hectare, a full cover spray at 7 to 10 day interval. Another important uh, disease is your paper blotch caused by a fungi that is called Alternaria pori. It's common wherever onions are produced. And the symptoms first appear small water soaked lesions, you know, that quickly develop white centers. With time, the lesions, you know, turn brown to purple. Then they are surrounded by a, 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 a zone of, of, of yellow tissue. This is quite common. And uh, we are saying you may come in with your uh, triazoles. For example, your tepiconazole, uh, 150 mils in 100 liters of water, you may invoke your diphenoconazole, you may invoke your zero liter uh, to control this, this, this product. And with tepiconazole and other triazoles, we are saying do not exceed for applications per season why we are trying to control a uh, resistance. Symptony mutual caused by a fungi called perinospora destructor. And this one can defoliate all the crop prematurely. It first affects all the leaves. And uh, you may experience premature death of onion leaves once you lose your leaves, your bulbs are affected because it is in the leaves where uh, your photo assimilates, where photosynthesis you know, takes place. So we don't want to lose our leaves. If we lose our leaves, we also have uh, small bulbs. So the pathogen initiates infection during cool temperatures and less than 72 degrees are used Fahrenheit there. Let's, let's, let's work with, with, with the degrees Celsius. We don't, let's work with 20 or so degrees Celsius there and, and, and wet conditions, especially uh, those who apply their crops, you know, late and uh, their cool temperatures, especially at night and, and wet conditions. Uh, for those who do overhead irrigation, we normally encourage you guys to do your irrigation, especially during the day, so that uh, when night comes, our leaves are, are, are dry. The, in terms of control, we have a product called the recipe deleter that you can use. You can also come in with your mangoes with basic preventive sprays, and uh, the recipe metal main, it also controls uh, the product. Other important pests uh, may include your caterpillars and grasshoppers, your necrot, your powdery mildew, your rust, and nematodes. We have uh, uh, all the solutions for the, for the, for the different you know, pests. In terms of weeds, uh, it's very critical to maintain a weed-free you know, field. So we are saying, you come in with your oxyflofen or go 
that you can apply 10 to 18 days after transplanting at three liters per hectare. You may choose to split apply the three liters and to space them uh, two weeks apart. You start at week four, then the other five, one and a half liters uh, at, at, at week six. Uh, oxyflofen will control your mostly your broadleaf weeds and, and a few grass weeds. But for all the annual grasses and perennial grasses, we are saying uh, you may come in with uh, a fluazifop uh, as, as, as your control, you know, a, a solution. Uh, I would like to end here and perhaps uh, put what I've discussed into perspective with a short uh, video that I would want to say. I hope it's going to. Uh, it's going to play. Let me stop sharing this one. So I'll try to look for the yeah, it's all right. So whilst we are waiting for uh, Zivana to share uh, a video, um, maybe those with questions you can send to our inbox, then we'll read them out for our presenters. Sorry, uh, saying the video is in the format, it cannot be played. Ah, all right, uh, not a problem. You can always share with us later on, then we can it's include fine. it when we upload it's the fine. Video. Sure. Uh, webinar. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Zivanai, for that great uh, presentation. Much appreciated. You covered very important issues there. You covered very important issues there to ensure uh, a good onion yield. Thanks again for helping uh, with the good fertilizer program and also uh, a good pro a crop protection program for uh, successful uh, onion production. The network seems to be failing our next uh, presenter from Musica Solutions. Uh, le uh, let me just try and see if uh, he'll be able to connect. Otherwise, we'll move on to the question and answer uh, session. Hello, Sydney. Just checking if you are in. All right. Uh, seems the the network is is is, is failing. Uh, our presenter. But anyways, let's move on to uh, the next uh, presentation, uh, to, to, to the question and answer uh, session. What, to, what we are going to do is we are going to have uh, a, record, a recorded presentation with Musica Solutions, then we'll upload to our Facebook page and as well as our YouTube uh, channel. So the first question here is for uh, Sivanda. It's saying, is it possible to get the seed co-presentation? Yes, yes, uh, it's possible. So what we'll do is um, uh, I can share a PDF guide for that one. Maybe they could contact me directly or I'll share the same with you and then you can put it, uh, if there's a section where you can put attachments, 
and then we see if it can be accessible to the participants, but it's possible to definitely get the presentation, yes, correct. All right, great. Uh, thanks for, for taking that one. And also we have been recording the uh, webinar and it's available on our YouTube channel. So you can uh, also uh, visit our Facebook page if you want to view more and should you want to receive the uh, presentations you can share with us uh, your email address just type in your email address and we'll be able to share with you uh, in the next few days then another question here is uh, uh, for you Swanda again it's uh, it says which variety can I grow in Norton Okay, uh, so for Norton areas, uh, we these are people who are very close to our altitude at our trail set there. Um, we can take Dina F1, Elad F1, and certain F1. All of them are they are suitable for the Norton area. But now, what we want to understand is uh, how he wants to handle the crop. Like I said, do you want to keep it? Do you want to sell part of it as greens? That's when we then make it easy to say, okay. According to the area you want to plant, uh, probably let's work with these ratios in terms of the varieties. But if it's a predominantly drying variety, we would recommend Dina F1 and a certain F1. Uh, great. Uh, thanks uh, again for taking that one. And then uh, another question here is for ZFC is uh, saying the last time I planted on onions, I faced a challenge. Uh, on uh, thrips. Can you please shed more light on how this can be controlled? Uh, thanks, thanks for the question. Uh, the farmers have to uh, note that thrips are sucking tests. So you need something that is systemic to control them. Okay, so in terms of, of control measures in ZFC, we have a number of products that they may use to control such, and they are systemic in terms of uh, uh, how they work. I talked about malathion. I talked about uh, spike extra. Uh, they may also come in even with Actara. They may also apply. They may also come in with uh, with with Thunder because there is emitter Thunder. There is emitter Clopid Actara. Uh, there is Thiamethoxam, and in Spike Extra there is Acetamiprid. All these are your neonicotinoids, which can uh, control your thrips effectively because they are systemic uh, by nature. So it's important for farmers also to make sure that they are scouting their, 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 their fields. All right, uh, thanks for, for taking that one. Uh, then uh, another question whilst you are still there is from evidence. Uh, evidence says, how different is the system of putting fertilizers in ferros where you are going to put the plant the plants versus broadcasting on the whole area, which is the most recommended? There are many ways of, of, of killing a cat. The bottom line is that we want our base of fertilizer to be applied at or before planting. And we talked about the shallowness of the root system of your onion crop. So the fertilizer must be in the region where the crop will be able to absorb and extract nutrients. So whether you're applying it in the furrows or you're broadcasting, once you broadcast, you may then need to incorporate uh, the, the, the fertilizer in the, in the root zone. The most important thing there is that you are applying the right amount of fertilizer into both uh, uh, methods of application are okay because you are applying a uh, at or before planting, which is which is very good. We don't want farmers to come in with their best applications after you know after after planting or transplanting. So 
you can work with what is comfortable with you. We are not hard and fast about any method of, 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 of application, but what, what is right for you at your farm, given, given the circumstances that are there. But both methods are okay, as long as you are applying the right amount of fertilizer and uh, the, the right type of fertilizer. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Zivanai. Then uh, another question for you is uh, any pesticide any pesticides or fungicides that are applied at a seedbed? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, one important uh, factor to consider when you want to establish your seedbed is your uh, nematodes. You may also, you, you may need to test whether there are nematodes or there, but we encourage our farmers to apply nematicides when they are establishing their, their, their seedbeds. Because onions are also uh, attacked by, by nematodes even from the seedbed. So it's important to, 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 to have your nematicide. Then uh, Svanda talked about uh, 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 jumping off, which is very prevalent, especially to those who come in early and establish their, their seedbeds uh, on the open when we are receiving lots of rain. So they may come in with a number of fungicides to, to, to control such your spoke you, your 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 metal man, your 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 mango zip, you can invoke those uh, in, in, even in the in the seed bed. All right, uh, thanks uh, very much for covering that one. Then another question here is for, for Svanda. It says, can we grow it's from Nyasha? Uh, it, it says, can we grow onions all over the year or there is um, a certain pesticide? season? Uh, sorry, if you can uh, check the question again. Okay, Nyasha here says, uh, is there a specific season to grow onions or they can be grown at any time of the year? Okay, um, we definitely have specific seasons. Um, this is ref, you know, where the variety performs at its best. So we predominantly have most of our onions bulbing as a result of exposure to uh, uh, to to cold temperatures and also a combination of day length and cold temperatures. However, there are also developments, obviously, in the industry where uh, you know the breeders are trying to bring in material that can be grown even without the frost, especially just for purposes of green onions. But our predom varieties currently are predominantly grown uh, through winter so that they experience uh, low temperatures for bulb initiation and also uh, the day lengths so that they also bulb correctly. So we currently grow most of our onions strictly in winter, but there are efforts to try and you know, explore opportunities of growing uh, in the off season or mainly for, for, for uh, green onions. Because remember, when we plant in the rains, that means uh, you can't dry them. Uh, you definitely have rains uh, occasionally. Uh, that will definitely uh, make the whole thing uh, a bit difficult. All right, thanks, uh, Svanda, for answering that one. Then another one for you is, is it advisable to plant seedlings when they've developed bulbs? Yes, uh, that's a very, very important uh, uh, question. Now, there are two reasons why you can get uh, seedlings bulbing prior to getting to the field and also, also touch on the consequences. Uh, the first is, uh, reason is planting an onion variety outside its correct slot. So, uh, you know, the environmental conditions can actually trigger bulbing prematurely from the seedbed. Then secondly, if you plant your seedlings um, uh, two spaced, in other words, a very uh, low density seed bed. Whilst it's ideal in terms of getting a bigger size, for some varieties they tend to bulb. But the experience now when you transplant those seed seedlings, which has got a small bulb uh, to the field, is that um, if it's early, like now when it's raining, 
most of them they sort of die out because you know that neck and the bulb i think there are some some disruptions when you transplant it gives um you know a complicated uh, takeoff of the crop but um uh, if you are getting into the cooler months those same seedlings they generally take off for specialists if you transplant around the 20th of march going onwards and you are in cooler areas if you are in warmer areas maybe much later into april you can get a normal crop without any problems but early transplantings of those seedlings that would have formed some small bulbs uh, it is proven to be a bit of a challenge especially if it's now where we're still experiencing some rains okay uh great uh thanks for for uh taking that one again um and uh, i see uh, so many questions and comments that are coming in but uh because of our time uh we uh unfortunately cannot uh, take any more questions uh so this marks the end of our webinar i uh, would like to thank sidco zfc uh for this event many thanks to our presenters uh, that is mr zivane gonzo and also uh El Sivanta from sidco vegetables uh, for the great uh, presentations and uh i would also like to thank musika uh for uh trying to to connect and participate in this uh, event we'll then uh, try to uh, have a recorded um part of of of, of the webinar with them then re-upload on our facebook page so to all participants thank you very much uh we hope that you have benefited from the great presentations that we uh, had uh thank you very much we also hope that you will join in on our next uh, webinars uh, if you want to keep uh posted or to get information on our upcoming events please uh, share with us your email address then we'll add you to our mailing list so from agribusiness media my name is rollings uh enjoy your day thank you